Okay, do you realize that you and 24 million, that's million, convicted felons in this country could start a business right now with no money, no background check, and no credit check. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I hate lumping it all, lumping it all together, <laughs> but it's true, no matter who you are. And I'm thinking about, you know, uh, relating it to uh, people with uh, felony convictions. Is that? Gosh, I mean, you know how hard it is to get a job like that. I was listening to a guy. I uh, went to a reception for the Washington DC Coral Arts Society and they gave a humanitarian award to this fellow called Brian Stevenson. God, he's a terrific guy. He's a lawyer who won some recent cases of the Supreme Court that eliminates like giving uh, life sentences to juveniles. He gets people off a death row and everything. And he's really fighting for the, um, the justice system or against the justice system or whatever, how it, it hurts poor po folks, you know, and, and, and minorities and people like that who, who don't have a fair shot in the system. And, and so what he did is, uh, Oh, well, he got an award, but I was thinking about that. Gosh, and the data. Then I start looking at data at this stuff. And there are 24 million adults in this country with felony convictions. 24 million. And, and also, that made up 25 a black adult population is <laughs> as felony convictions. 25% of all adults in the black community have <laughs> felony convictions. In the non-black community, it's only 6%. Man, we have a in prison industrial complex in this world, in this country. That, that's insane, it seems. Every, now, here's some other statistics that are interesting about uh, you know uh, prisoners in, in the United States. We're putting people in prison for anything. Now, here's a listing of the prison population in the world. And I only have the top countries in this list that you see there. We're number one. Man, we're number one again. <laughs> America is number one in prison population. Isn't that amazing? China is number two. I mean, we have like two million, over two million people in the prisons today. Man, you know, that's expensive. I mean, I, I, the last time I heard it cost like $25,000 a piece to keep people in prison. You know, <laughs> you go to Harvard <laughs> or something like that. Uh, China, Russia. And, and then next to that listing of the top number of people, that's absolute number. You know, just count heads in prisons. The number next to that is more significant because it's how many people per 100,000 citizens are in jail. So we have like almost a thousand <laughs> per 100,000 that are in jail. You know, China, which has over a million and a half people in jail, that only reps a hundred. So we're putting like, our number is 778. China is only a hundred. I would think like everybody goes to prison in China. They're, <laughs> they're locking up people left and right, it seems like that, you know, for anything. You look at pe people cross-eyed, you know. But man, we're way above them. And Russia is the closest thing to us. They're 600, but we're still ahead. <laughs> and nobody, Russia with 600, us with 700 and some, everybody else is way down 200 or less. Nobody. You know, I mean, it's just, it's amazing. How we, we, we put so much energy and wasted talent and things like that to our prison system. Look at, like, Japan has 62. Yeah, the number, and that's not absolute, that's per 100,000 people. They have 62 people in prisons. We have 778, man. <laughs> so it, it's, it's just amazing. And see, with that kind of record and background check, you know, uh, there's another report here by nonprofit organizations that they estimate there's 65 million people who can't apply for jobs because the numbers I gave you were for f felony. That's uh, 24 million people, felony. But if you look at misdemeanors too, that's less than a felony, all the big corporations, so many of them, it shows in this report that you know, they don't want anything like that. So all these big employers, you know, I mean, it says right on their applications, no exceptions, no misdemeanors and or felonies of any type ever in your background, you know. And do not apply with misdemeanors or felonies. Man, and these are companies, big time companies. Listen to Bank of America, 
you know, Amarac. I mean, they have 250,000 people. You know, Lowell's three and 230,000 people. You know, Accenture, you know, 180,000 people. Domino's Pizza, 170,000 people. You know, just because this is even a misdemeanor. You know, <laughs> it could be a traffic fine for all you know. You know, uh, a serious traffic fine. You get a misdemeanor. So this is, and see what, to me what's important about this is our internet economy and the gig economy that is creating all the new jobs, they don't care about background checks, good or bad, but it makes more opportunity, makes a lever feel. You know, I mean like the Stevenson guy, he says, you know, the cure to poverty is not wealth, it's justice. You know, so if you're out trying to uh, get a job, get a, a money for business or anything like that, and just because of uh, something that happened in your background, they won't let you play. You know, or your bad credit won't let you play. You know, now on the internet, man, that's right. You, no matter who the hell you are, <laughs> the 74 million people, <laughs> or actually 70, 65 million people now in that other data, could get this money to get a job, get this money to start a business or whatever, because they don't ask about background check. That's what's so neat about the internet that's going on now. <laughs> it just throws all that out the window. <clears throat> uh, like, it, it, you, know, you know, if you go to the bank, you know, they're not going to you know, lend you money, or most likely. I mean, they can even on SBA loan money, but it's going to be hard to sell. And actually, even a bank loan, you know, if you don't have a lot of money, they're not going to give you a loan anyway, no matter if you have a misdemeanor or felony. <laughs> Banks are usually for people who don't need money. So that's even silly. You know, and even some of the, uh, the new websites, the platforms, you know, that they have where you get jobs like TaskRabbit, you know, they do background checks, you know, things like that. So if you have that felony conviction or whatever, something like that, you know, you're probably SOL, you know, on that. And see, this is where the new jobs are coming. You know, it's sort of things like uh, Airbnb. I mean, this is a platform, five years in business. There's a million people making money off of that platform, you know. Uh, you know, like, you know, they're hotels that people use in their homes and things like that, and extra apartments, hotels. But they're not creating jobs, they're creating income opportunities that are flexible and better and things like that. So all these new kinds of things that are happening on the internet is a whole different economy than the old time economy of getting traditional jobs and things like this. And this is the growth area in our economy. And that is less likely to require background checks or credit cards. Like, uh, Kickstarter and crowdfunding. There's like a thousand crowdfunding sites all already out there, you know, that generate money for people to start any kind of business. You fill out that form, it takes maybe a couple hours or whatever, as long as it takes you to, to set up that website for free, for free, that's right, for free. <laughs> no credit check, no financial statements, nothing. You just have to explain well enough what the heck you need money for and what you're gonna do with it, you know? And that's what's neat. Now here I have an interview of a fellow who, who, who was a thug. He's a self-admitted thug. Yeah, he said he was, you know, stealing and hurting people and robbing and you know drugs and everything. And he's like 22 years old. He's like, hey, he's got to quit this. He went on one of these crowdfunding sites and got got eight thousand dollars to do a rap. He wanted to sing raps. He was able to raise eight thousand dollars. I mean, this stuff is an instant, you know. You don't just put up a website and people throw you money. Yeah, there's work involved, but it doesn't take knowing something. It doesn't take, you know, a sock full of money. It doesn't take a clean police record. It doesn't take a credit check. It doesn't take all that. It's all the other stuff. You know, it takes hard work, sure. You know, everything does in life, you know, but you got to get a chance chance to play. And that's the justice part of it, you know. You, you got to get a chance to play. And, and, and this crowdfunding money, I mean, to me, it's amazing. That's right, people need money for start a business or, or anything or start a nonprofit. I mean, see, not only is it free, <laughs> there's no income requirements, too. <laughs> like, you get money, <laughs> and it doesn't matter how much you make or little you make. Doesn't matter. Nobody's going to ask you that. <laughs> there's no credit check. Uh, you keep the money forever. 
order. There's no complicated forms or business plans, lawyers or accountants, like if you had to go to a bank or do a business plan, out. no. It's fast, in 60 days, you know, it's it's all over, you know what happened, and if you have to do it again or not. You don't have to put up with fat cat gatekeepers, some guy with a cigar, or a woman with a cigar, whatever, <laughs> saying, hey, that sounds like a dumb idea. They don't know. You go to the public. The public tells you whether you have a good idea or not, and whether they want to support you in doing that. You know, uh, and also it's a better guarantee for your ultimate success because you're going to potential customers. You go on these things and what you say, hey, I'm going to make this thing. I'll have it next year. You want to buy one now, basically. Yeah, that sounds good. I think we should have that in this country. I'll send you a hundred bucks and you, get, you, you send it to me when you got it. That's what it is. That's the kind of deal. Who would think? You can't go into a store and say, yes, Macy's, give them money and say, I'll come back next year for the sweater. <laughs> no, but people do that on the internet. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, and so it, it's, it's a better way to find out if your idea is worth it or not before you invest time in really filling a garage full of products. And then you get customers, future customers, to give you the money to build the products. So then you don't have to get it some fat cat, a bank, or whatever that you probably can't get it from, you know, where you would build the products and then hope to sell it. You sell it first. And then you don't have to worry if you're going to sell it or not, because now you got the money from the people. Now you're going to make the products and they're willing to wait. Terrific. They're now giving out more money, like artists get more money from uh, kicks from these uh, crowdfunding sites than the National Endowment of the Arts. So it's a growth thing in our country. So that's why whether you're a convicted felon or, or just have a shitty job you want to get rid of, <laughs> yeah, it's open now. The main sites out there now are Kickstarter, Indiegogo, GoFundMe, Fundraiser, it's a little funny spelling, uh, Conquistador, Crowded, a couple of these other, Funder, Hut, communityfunded.com. So there's a whole bunch yeah, out there. And there's more. Uh, we have, a, if you go to Lesco uh, video ebooks, we have video ebooks that describe this process a lot more if you're interested. But just don't spend money, you know, to some consultant who says, oh, we'll know how to make you a zillion dollars on this. No, you don't need to do that. You could figure out all, all yourself. And so that's in raising money. Now, another place you could do, no matter who you are, is have a store. You could sell your services. You could sell products, the junk you want to get rid of, <laughs> whatever. And that costs you nothing. And you know, you don't have to, you know, go and get a lease or anything like that. You could get your store in the biggest mall in the world and cost you nothing. Yeah, these websites that attract millions and millions of people all day, you can have a store in these websites. Things like uh, Amazon, Etsy, ETSY, you know, uh, uh, eBay, all these things. I, I, I'm selling my suits I don't know, use anymore on eBay. You go on eBay now and set it up for free. And it's so easy. You don't have to know how to do it. And any of this stuff on the internet, another thing, if you're confused about it, again, don't hire a consultant to help you. Check out your public library. See if they offer services. A lot of public libraries now are, will sit down one-on-one -on -one and, and help you walk through the, these um, places that help you set up stores for free. See, there's no charge on anything. They just take a percentage of what you may eventually sell. Now, Etsy, or Etsy, I've been interviewing a lot of people who use that now. People that hate their job, people that want to do something else in life. And <laughs> this woman just is making tablecloths and, and you know putting artwork on tablecloths and selling them. And, and just started a whole new career like that. That's all you need. Some kind of product, yeah, uh, whatever. I, I, I'm doing an ebook and I have, I have an ebook at Etsy too. Now, again, when they're on here, then you have to figure out how to market it because there'll be some traffic coming in or may or may not help. But all that marketing, <laughs> you'll learn by trial and error, but you try it. If you're only <laughs> gonna learn something if you try it, like learning to walk, you gotta fall on your butt a hundred times. So you have eBay, you have Etsy, uh, eBay, God, I mean, they sell cars on eBay. You know, car parts, anything, you can see crap. I mean, you could go to like the government auctions and find all this stuff, you know, at auctions in the government and put on eBay and, and just sell it. You go to like, uh, I don't know if you know, Alibaba is a, uh, a biggest website in China. 
And they have all these cheap goods that are made in China, like a dollar, you get socks and things like this. It's wonderful. I buy a lot of stuff there. Well, you can find stuff there and then sell it for like three, four times the price on your store. You know, things like that because people aren't looking uh, like you are. And, and so that's why it, there's so many ways you could take other people's stuff that they don't want or then share the money. You can, if you have a buddy who has a store, know somebody, go down the store, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll sell some of these goods on eBay. And if I sell them, yeah, you know, I'll share the money with you. You know, it's going to take effort on your part, but but not, you know, out of pocket money. Speak of, get he's getting you the the, the product. You're finding out how to set it up on eBay and, and doing that. And so you know, there's no credit check, no background check. You know, for all these. And see, this is where our country's growing, in all these kinds of services, because the other ones uh, are shrinking. So you have your services, like you could go on Mechanical Turk and make money, like because that's a place where people go, like uh, have websites and need somebody to actually use their brain, like pick out the five things that have color red. You know, and there's a hundred of them coming over the, every day. So they'll pay you X dollars, whatever it is to do that. It, anywhere on your laptop, your phone or whatever, and they pay you, you know? You don't have to worry about paying pay because these are big organizations that have the platform or whatever. You could, you could be a, you know, a customer service right on your iPhone or Android or whatever kind of phone you have. Doesn't matter, they've switched the call to you and you're there and you're making money, no matter where you are. And see what all these jobs are, is that only when you wanna work. You go out and get a part-time job delivering pizza or something like that, that person wants you there every day from you know, five to 10 o'clock at night or something like that, because you know? he's gonna run that visit. But when it's virtual and run like on platforms, so if you're, you're gonna take it, fine. If not, they go to the next guy and they take it. You know? So it doesn't matter. So you have flexibility in your life. You know, and it's not enough money. No, okay, you don't take that. You wait for the next one. You know, and that's what's need. It gives power to you as an individual. But more thing, it's an opportunity. And these are where the jobs are growing. You're looking at the classified ads and regular places. Phew, they're shrinking. These are the ones that are growing. And no whether <laughs> and if you have you have a felony conviction or anything. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Well, I mean, with convictions, I'm sure some of them. Like I think they're running in trouble with Uber drivers now. But even still kind of Uber drivers, you don't even have to have a car to be an Uber driver. These people are making seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year, you know, as taxis, which aren't regulated kind of thing. And, and and you could rent a car for a week or a week at a time, no investment, and make enough money to pay for that and make a living. You know, and there's services, that's why there's so many options in life. Or or places like Upwork, that's another one. You put your services there on what you will do. You'll answer phones. You'll be customers. You'll make outward calls. Maybe set up appointments for, for some lawyer or something like that, or or some store that sells Venetian blinds, or, <laughs> and you do it just when you want to. Yep, you know? things like that, and it's all online. So you got to learn that system. So that's Upwork. In other words, Fiverr, and you can sell your services there. You know, I mean, you, all kinds of crazy things. Like you'll sing a, a song for. Uh, for your somebody's wedding or something like that or or it, it, it's just all the crazy things that people will do for five dollars go on there you know, see fiverr f-i-v-e-r-r dot com how people are making money doing that you know and maybe it's serious things maybe you're an artist maybe you you know you do something on the computer you do well it doesn't have to be high tech it could be low tech it could be shining shoes for all i know I mean, there's just everything out there elance is another one yeah um and even old craigslist that's been around for a while but that's still opportunities that it's not the normal place uh that that people are looking anymore but what's neat about these things is your own time these are flexible jobs everything now and they're websites that drive traffic before we had all these platforms and websites that of people looking for help you had to go out and bang on doors if you had a little business you had to go out and find customers somehow you put something at walmart i mean in the, at the grocery store on the bulletin board or whatever put little classified ads well these are big things like if you want to babysit for animals you know a pet sitter in your own home people are making thirty forty thousand dollars a year just having an extra dog or two most of the time you know wow see and they bring the customers in. They handle all the complications. You know, you know, you don't have to know accounting. You don't have to be, you know, legal stuff or anything because a platform handles all this stuff. So all the pain in the butt 
of having a business that we keep a lot of people from doing is taken over by somebody. All they have is a website and handles all that nonsense. And you do the hard work, you know, <laughs> and, and you're gonna do work trying to get customers too. And that's what it's all about. But all the little nonsense in the mind, like you're a handyman, they want for handyman, one for caretakers, you wanna take care of people in the area or whatever. You know, I mean, whether it's seniors or kids or anything like movers, they have a special one. You know, uh, uh, you wanna deliver stuff. Man, there's so many, there's, there's delivery service on just for lunches at, at Washington. We have, there's delivery service, you could drive lunches and make money, you know. Or now stores, local stores are, are competing with Amazon and things like that. You call up the store and they deliver it. But no, it's freelance people like you who make extra money, you know, doing that kind of thing. So there's so many more ways to do that. Uh, and it's, these part-time are just a lot more flexible than ever before. You know, uh, and that's what the internet's doing. It's, we're sharing our resources a lot more efficient. That's why they call it the shared economy. So no matter who you are, <laughs> look at these sources, uh, check out our, um, if you need more information about it, check out uh, Lesco video ebook. Dot com. But more importantly, man, don't, when you, if you're Googling this stuff, so you're not going to find the good stuff that is good. I need help to make money or something. You're going to find people selling you stuff, you know, selling you business opportunities or selling you money. Anybody who's just selling you stuff, keep away. Anything that, like that, particularly for getting a job, unless you got a lot of money and you got nothing to lose, fine. You know, that's up to you. But if you don't, don't spend money and be careful with Google. You're not going to find the good stuff. You're going to find people who want to sell you something because they pay lots of money to get on the first page so you only see them and not the free stuff.